like a species on the brink of extinction. Most big cities just don't work anymore. Now, at the dawn of a new millennium, architects, city planners, and futurists are all asking, what's next? In Tokyo, plans already exist that will change the way people live 50, 100, even 500 years from now. Sky City. Two-thirds of a mile high. Twice the height of the tallest skyscraper today. With homes and jobs for hundreds of thousands of pioneers. The world's first homesteaders in the sky. But can it be built? And would it be safe? Would Sky City be the metropolis of the future? Or a death trap in the sky? <laughs> Tokyo, Japan. Home to more than 12 million people. Like any great city today, it's jam-packed with concrete, glass, and steel. A painful sacrifice for a people who consider trees sacred. But if visionary architects have their way, all that will be replaced by this. A building that creates new green space indoors. It's called Sky City. And at two-thirds of a mile high, it would be by far the tallest building in the world. A high-voltage city that's suffocating from overcrowding. Tokyo has grown too large too quickly. 240 square miles of urban sprawl has created a commuting nightmare. Millions crowded to trains each day. Most Tokyo residents spend two to four hours every day traveling to and from work. That's 20 hours a week, a total of five years stolen from their lives. That's unproductive time. Instead of spending time creatively, people are wasting their lives commuting. Which is why Sky City envisions a new urban landscape. A city of the future carved out of thin air. But where can you put a building this large in one of the world's most crowded cities? With a footprint of 30 acres, Sky City would effectively condemn 120 Tokyo city blocks, possibly erasing centuries of Japanese heritage. It attempts to anticipate the needs of tomorrow, today. but it's also among the biggest economic gambles ever. Not many would have the stomach to attempt such a drastic solution to the Tokyo land crunch. But here at the Mori Building Company in Tokyo, urban planners are determined to think big. They're waging a ferocious battle to remake their city. 
and looking to win over Tokyo citizens with a PR campaign as radical as their building design, forming the same amount of land into a total urban environment for 135,000. But finding enough land may be the least of Sky City's problems. Tokyo's loose sandy soil may not be firm enough to support a structure this large. Sky City would tip the scales at six million tons. The combined weight of every man, woman and child in Japan. It would be the heaviest structure ever built in Asia. A risky business on the unstable soil that was once the bottom of an ocean. Sitting on sandy sediment, Sky City would be at exponentially greater risk. Thanks to the single most horrifying disaster looming over Tokyo. Earthquake. Tokyo's worst earthquakes wreak havoc. Even moderate earthquakes here bring buildings down. Here at the Takanaka Research Institute, engineers are looking for ways to safeguard such an enormous building. One of the biggest questions was, can we build something this tall safely? A building that would be three times the size of the tallest structure in Japan. Deep underground, this 150-ton G4 simulator reproduces the load of enormous buildings on different types of soil. This simple acrylic box will simulate the total weight of a 20-story office tower built on packed sand. As the centrifuge accelerates, it can produce 200 times the force of gravity. In this experiment, a simulated earthquake forced the model to move 1 16th of an inch. Invisible to the naked eye, But the same test suggests that a six million ton building could shift a whopping 100 feet. Enough to possibly destabilize the huge structure and bring it crashing down. So how could engineers protect Sky City and over a hundred thousand people from a catastrophic collapse? In some parts of the world, Builders quake-proof their skyscrapers by digging through loose soil, setting their foundation on solid bedrock below. But in Tokyo, that's not an option, because bedrock is simply out of reach. Builders would have to excavate through many layers of soil before hitting rock bottom, more than a mile and a half down, creating an 800-story basement. So Takanaka scientists experimented with an alternative to digging such a massive hole in the ground. They would drill thousands of smaller, shallow tubes and fill them with concrete. Called friction piles, they grip the earth like the fingers of a titan. And in this way, Sky City, six million tons of downward pressure would become its own immovable anchor. That took care of below the ground. Still, what could possibly provide enough stability for a building to rise 3,300 feet into the sky? The answer may already be under construction in Taiwan. It's called Taipei 101. 
When finished, it will be the tallest and the strongest skyscraper in the world. It will soar to a record-setting 1,667 feet. Though only half the size of Sky City, it may provide a proving ground for its most critical structural component, its mega columns. These muscular legs reinforce the entire structure. But strength like this doesn't come cheap. Each mega column is forged from uncommonly heavy three inch thick steel plate. Massively larger. Sky City's columns will require more than 500 million pounds of steel each. At a cost of $250 million per column. With six massive columns to build, that means a total of three billion pounds of steel. It would take a single mill almost 12 and a half years to produce that much steel. So instead, Sky City will consume the output of a global network of steel mills. Day after day, year after year, this will be the scene as factories around the world strain to produce enough high strength steel for the structure. Enough to build 36 aircraft carriers, three times the number in the entire U.S. fleet. Each 20,000 pound block of superheated ore enters the milling machinery. The metal has to go from this to this before it cools. At 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the raw steel is just soft enough for molding. But the water that keeps it free from impurities also robs the steel of precious heat. And after only four minutes in the searing crucible, the metal sheds nearly 1,000 degrees. But it also reaches its final size, a 20 by 5 foot steel plate. Each enormous Sky City column will call for thousands of plates like this. Two days later, when the plates have finally cooled to room temperature, they'll face the fire again, this time from welder's torches. There's no margin for error in assembling these mega columns. No room for even microscopic imperfection. A column could collapse, putting tens of thousands of lives at risk. To avert disaster, builders can't take chances. The weakest links in any steel structure are the wells that must forge a rock-solid hole from so many enormous parts. So an army of welders takes over. Their weapons? torches and massive quantities of white-hot solder, burning at more than 8,000 degrees. These workers toil relentlessly to ensure that not one joint could ever fail. Donning heavy protective gear in 100 degree heat, they squeeze themselves inside the oven-like columns to finish the job. In a final step, workers shave each piece and bevel its edges to ensure a perfect fit.
At 80 tons each, the finished columns will seem little more than Legos when stacked one on top another, ultimately forming the massive mega columns that give Taipei 101 its tremendous strength. To support Sky City's overwhelming height and weight, its mega columns will have to be at least four times larger at the base. So massive that no existing factory could fabricate them and no truck could transport them to the construction site. So the factory will have to come to Sky City using new automated construction technologies to build the mega columns from the ground up right on site. We're counting on the fact that the construction process will benefit from new developments in robotics allowing us to work 24 hours a day. That's how we'll build this building. It's called the Big Canopy, a self-rising all-weather roof already in use in Japan. With this, Sky City's massive columns could finally be constructed. Four massive hydraulic jacks always keep the factory roof one step ahead of the rising building. A giant elevator delivers prefabricated floor and column sections up to the computer control cranes that actually put the building together. Reading the unique barcode stamped on each, the crane automatically directs them to their final position. all according to a predetermined master plan. With the computers humming 24 hours a day, the job practically runs itself, saving precious time and millions of dollars. And on a structure the size of Sky City, it would take technology like the big canopy to raise its super columns into the clouds. But to complete the rest of the building, They'll need an armada of super cranes, able to lift huge loads to dizzying heights. Cranes like these, used to build Taipei 101 in Taiwan. At 56 floors, it already dwarfs every other skyscraper in the city, and still has another 45 floors to go. Finished, it will stand taller than the surrounding mountains. In many ways, it's a dry run for Sky City. Because both structures face the same peril. Here on the Pacific Rim, known as the Ring of Fire. A geologically unstable region where a sudden earthquake is a constant threat. Imagine Sky City at two-thirds of a mile high in the middle of Tokyo. What if disaster struck, knocking workers, tools, and materials from the unfinished building? That's exactly what happened here in Taiwan. In March 2002, a major earthquake, 6.8 on the Richter scale, struck. Snapping two cranes like twigs, and sending them crashing 60 floors to the street below. Killing four people. That catastrophe is never far from the thoughts of these workers who tackle the most perilous job on the site, muscling the 80-ton columns up the side of the building. Like pilots checking their plane before takeoff, they inspect and examine every detail before hoisting 160,000 pounds nearly one quarter of a mile in the air. After signing off, 
they pass control to the crane operator a thousand feet above. A man they can't even see. But the giant column is only part of the crane operator's burden. He's also wrestling with braided steel cable, 2,000 feet of it, weighing an incredible 20,000 pounds. Lifting this much steel takes nerves of steel. With the precision of a neurosurgeon, the crane operator keeps his massive payload balanced and steady. Just one miscalculation could lead to disaster. Sending a hundred tons of steel flying out of control and one half mile or more of heavy cable ripping through the air like a giant's bullwhip. An accident of this magnitude at Sky City could send a column the size of a five-story building into a nosedive. But even a small problem could bring the entire construction process to a grinding halt. If workers at the top were to spot a loose bolt or steel plate, the crane operator would have to stop the column in midair, leaving a deadly load dangling perilously over the heads of workers below. Without stopping, it takes 10 minutes for a column to clear the top floor. Now more than ever, easy does it. As the men carefully pull, twist, and nudge the huge section into position. While three men actually stand directly below, waiting to make the final connection from the inside. Encased in a potential steel coffin, they have only one escape route a cramped hole at the top. Mission accomplished. Next, a team of welders goes to work. And for 48 hours around the clock, they secure this 80-ton section to its base until it's part of the super column's seamless body. It will take 500 columns like these to top off Taipei 101 at 1,667 feet. A challenge to those who dream of building even bigger. Like Sky City. Sky City would make history not only for its mammoth size, but its design would be equally radical and unprecedented. Unlike any normal skyscraper, anywhere. Most are framed by a lattice of cross beams and pillars. But Sky City would have no such interior web of rigid supports. In fact, its 14 open space plateaus, with each platform larger than a football stadium, make the immense building almost entirely hollow. It seems impossible. How to support a roof over each plateau strong enough to serve as floor to the level above? Once again, builders in Taiwan may hold the key. In Taipei 101, engineers faced a similar challenge. How to cover a massive open atrium without introducing pillars or other supports. Their solution? An enormous space truss, 250 feet long, weighing 1,800 tons, and shaped like the rib cage of a dragon. An important symbol of power and luck in Chinese culture. When builders remove the scaffolding, this steel and glass roof will soar nine stories above an indoor public square. 
Mega trusses like this one could keep Sky City's interior spaces open. But on a vastly larger scale, Sky City would require 14 monster trusses, as much as three times longer, and weighing nearly 10,000 tons each. As the structure of each plateau is finished, workers would begin building the interior spaces. Residents could begin to move in, even while construction continued overhead. As soon as a plateau is finished, it will be habitable. So we want to live in it while building it, as it grows taller and taller. The completion of each plateau would create an entire new community with more apartments, designer shops, gyms, cineplexes, and elegant restaurants. But the looming potential for disaster grows with height. Some dangers are almost too terrifying to contemplate. While others are so commonplace, they're easily overlooked. None is more potentially deadly than wind. The taller the building, the greater the threat. During a typhoon or a hurricane, the force of wind can actually threaten the building's survival. Wind speeds can reach up to 150 miles per hour. Tokyo is ground zero for several of these killers each year. Sky City at two-thirds of a mile high would be especially vulnerable. How could Sky City's designers protect this super tall tower from such destructive natural forces? Again, Taipei 101 in Taiwan provides a clue. Its unprecedented height means it will face record wind loads. Wind tunnel engineers carefully analyzed whether its design would stand up to extreme wind conditions. The designers, both the architect and the structural engineer, came to us asking for some assistance with understanding the wind loads on the Taipei Financial Center. Researchers created a scale model of the massive skyscraper and subjected it to a battery of tests. Box-shaped buildings take the full force of wind head-on. Tests reveal that even this building, at only half the size of Sky City, could be in jeopardy. We determined that the wind loads that were on the building were higher than what they expected. Suddenly, the entire project was at risk. It was a devastating blow. Until engineers devised a simple and elegant solution. By reconfiguring the corners of the building to a cutout W shape, the force of the wind could be deflected. But Sky City's designers face an even greater challenge because it presents an even larger target. The solution? Make the building round, allowing ferocious high-altitude winds to slip right past it. But wind can cause still one more problem that simple streamlining can't solve. Skyscrapers sway back and forth, even in a light breeze. Unchecked, the motion can make inhabitants seasick. As these test subjects riding a skyscraper simulator can attest. 
How could Sky City's designers stop their titanic tower from tossing like a ship in heavy seas? In smaller buildings, engineers often install heavy counterweights to counteract swaying. In Taiwan, builders plan to hang a steel sphere. weighing an incredible 1.3 million pounds. When wind pushes the tower one way, the weight will move in the opposite direction, counteracting or damping the building's movement. But the larger the building, the heavier the weight must be to steady it. And in a building as massive as Sky City, a counterweight would have to weigh as much as 50 million pounds. it would monopolize an entire space plateau. Real estate too valuable to fill with dead weight. Can anything take its place? Scientists at the Takanaka Research Institute are working on a solution. They're shaking things up in the world of mass dampers in a state-of-the-art test facility simulating earthquakes and ultra-high winds. This five-story building's been modified to wobble like a 30-story skyscraper in a hurricane. Rubber separators between the floors make the building unstable, creating an ideal test bed for Takanaka's radical new wind damper technology. Located on the top floor, this six-ton weight can bring the swaying building under control. When sensors detect sway, a computer directs two powerful hydraulic pistons to shift the damper in the opposite direction. Because this system is powered, this active damper can be smaller and lighter than a passive or unpowered damper would need to be. Rescuing valuable real estate at the top of a building. Making Sky City both a safe and gentle giant. Easy on the stomach. With the last structural problem solved, Sky City can now take on the challenges that confront every other modern city. Tokyo suffers from some of the worst traffic congestion in the world. One of Sky City's goals is to offer freedom from the tyranny of autos. Developing the right traffic system and the system for delivering goods throughout the city will be a very important task. During rush hour in Sky City, as many as 100,000 people could be on the move inside the tower. To find a way to move people efficiently, designers look to the past, to the work of legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright half a century ago. In 1956, he proposed building Mile High City. At 528 floors, the structure would have been much taller even than Sky City. And Wright proposed radical new technologies to help people get around. Like multi-decker atomic powered elevators, cruising at 60 miles an hour. And landing pads for 150 personal helicopters. The building was before its time. But Wright believed that one day, buildings like this would be commonplace. That day may have finally arrived. Atomic lifts are not an option. But engineers are working on systems that would make Wright proud with enough speed and capacity to keep Sky City residents on the move, horizontally and vertically.
This is the Otis Elevator Testing Tower near Tokyo. The tallest elevator test site in the world. In a high-rise building, the biggest question is how to make the elevators work to carry the greatest number of people in the least amount of time. Otis engineers have built one of the fastest elevators in the world, able to cruise at over 30 miles an hour. They've also perfected a double-decker elevator system that can carry 70 people at once. It's a good start, but for Sky City, they know that they'll have to do even better. Sky City, Sky City will be a thousand meters tall. If you use a normal rope-based system, the elevator weight becomes really large. So we'll have to improve the technology. To lighten the rope or to find a way to eliminate the rope completely, that's the goal. Combining the next generation of elevator technology with computer-driven high-speed trains, engineers will create an elegant three-ring circus of transportation. A visitor to the building could take a triple-decker elevator from the ground to the top in just over two minutes. Or climb the tower's exterior in a spiral monorail. Perhaps shuttle on a local elevator. Or circle one of Sky City's parks in a sky wagon. The days of time-wasting commutes would be over. By condensing the entire sprawling city into one enormous vertical tower. But the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And Sky City's designers are preparing for the worst killer that can strike a skyscraper. Fire. For high-rise residents, there's nothing more terrifying than this. Tokyo has one of the finest fire departments in the world. Battle-tested not only by fires, but devastating earthquakes, typhoons, and other natural disasters. When the alarm sounds in a skyscraper, firefighters jump into action. But not in trucks. In this, the only helicopter in the world outfitted to fight high-rise fires. They practice here at this 10-story training tower. The chopper's loaded with 300 gallons of water. Two rigid hoses can be aimed into the heart of any blaze, at any height. It pumps out nearly three gallons of water per second. In just two minutes, it drains its entire 300-gallon reserve. But it doesn't have to return to base to refill. This 10-foot hose allows it to guzzle water wherever it can find it, even a swimming pool. With this one-of-a-kind helicopter, the fire department finally has a way to fight high-rise fires. Consider this disaster scenario. The year is 2160. Sky City finally stands proudly over Tokyo, cause for celebration. When an emergency sensor detects a gas leak on Space Plateau 9, toxic fumes are building up, setting the stage for a deadly chain of events. An accidental explosion followed by fire and deadly smoke. Sky City's emergency response system alerts the Tokyo Fire Department. A fleet of helicopters arrives on the scene.
Each helicopter furiously empties its 300-gallon tank, fighting to keep the blaze from spreading to the other plateaus. But progress is slow. It takes each chopper 10 agonizing minutes to refill. While the battle rages on the exterior of Sky City, the interior of Space Plateau 9 fills with noxious smoke. Have the building's designers made a fatal blunder? Is Sky City to be the metropolis of the future or a colossal death trap in the sky? It's a question engineers have already asked at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Here, Kenny Kwok and his students put this model of Sky City to the torch. They know that the difference between life and death will be determined by the building's ability to vent the deadly smoke. They pump smoke into the model space plateau. Toxic fumes quickly fill the atrium. In most buildings, Thick smoke like this would quickly suffocate anyone unable to escape. But Sky City is not like other buildings. Because the large interior spaces are not closed to the elements. Instead, designers have created large open gaps near the roof of each space plateau. Providing exposure not just to sky, but to wind. When you're building that high, it's actually quant quite unusual to have absolutely calm day. Building a building that tall, the vast majority of the time, there will be some breeze. To see whether wind would make a difference, they run the smoke test again, only in their wind tunnel. Simulating a strong breeze blowing around Sky City's streamlined shape. This time, the smoke pours out of the building. If the real Sky City would behave the same way, it could buy residents precious minutes. Allowing the Tokyo Fire Department to bring the blaze under control without paying a heavy price in lives. In this scenario, disaster was averted thanks to a world-class emergency response team and to the building's radical design. Sky City. A tonic for an ailing metropolis. Future home to 35,000 residents and millions of visitors. If Sky City's designers are right, cities as we know them could disappear to be replaced by this, the Hyper City. Not one building, but a cluster of titans. The next generation megastructure. Child of engineers who dare to dream the impossible. It would be the heaviest structure ever built in Asia. A risky business on the unstable soil that was once the bottom of an ocean. Sitting on sandy sediment, Sky City would be at exponentially greater risk. Thanks to the single most horrifying disaster looming over Tokyo. Earthquake. Tokyo's worst earthquakes wreak havoc. Even moderate earthquakes here bring buildings down. Here at the Takanaka Research Institute, engineers are looking for ways to safeguard such an enormous building. 
One of the biggest questions was, can we build something this tall safely? A building that would be three times the size of the tallest structure in Japan. Deep underground, this 150-ton G4 simulator reproduces the load has created a commuting nightmare. Millions crowded to trains each day. Most Tokyo residents spend two to four hours every day traveling to and from work. That's 20 hours a week, a total of five years stolen from their lives. That's unproductive time. Instead of spending time creatively, people are wasting their lives commuting. Which is why Sky City envisions a new urban landscape. A city of the future carved out of thin air. But where can you put a building this large in one of the world's most crowded cities. With a footprint of 30 acres, Sky City would effectively condemn 120 Tokyo city blocks, possibly erasing centuries of Japanese heritage. It is... Tokyo, Japan, home to more than 12 million people. Like any great city today, it's jam-packed with concrete, glass, and steel. A painful sacrifice for a people who consider trees sacred. But if visionary architects have their way, all that will be replaced by this. A building that creates new green space indoors. It's called Sky City. And at two-thirds of a mile high, it would be by far the tallest building in the world. A high-voltage city that's suffocating from overcrowding. Tokyo has grown too large too quickly. 240 square miles of urban sprawl Like a species on the brink of extinction, most big cities just don't work anymore. Now, at the dawn of a new millennium, architects, city planners, and futurists are all asking, what's next? In Tokyo, plans already exist that will change the way people live 50, 100, even 500 years from now. Sky City, two-thirds of a mile high, twice the height of the tallest skyscraper today, with homes and jobs for hundreds of thousands of pioneers, the world's first homesteaders in the sky. But can it be built? Would it be safe? Would Sky City be the metropolis of the future? Or a death trap in the sky? Attempts to anticipate the needs of tomorrow, today. But it's also among the biggest economic gambles ever. Not many would have the stomach to attempt such a drastic solution to the Tokyo land crunch. 
But here at the Mori Building Company in Tokyo, urban planners are determined to think big. They're waging a ferocious battle to remake their city. And looking to win over Tokyo citizens with a PR campaign as radical as their building design, forming the same amount of land into a total urban environment for 135,000. But finding enough land may be the least of Sky City's problems. Tokyo's loose sandy soil may not be firm enough to support a structure this large. Sky City would tip the scales at six million tons. The combined weight of every man, woman, and child in Japan 